how increasing the interest rate in 2022 is going to affect your buying a house. Oh, awesome. But first, let's hit it. Welcome to our channel. And this is if this is your first time in our channel and you wanted to know everything about Greenville, North Carolina, please subscribe our channel. Also get notified when we put the new videos and also gives us thumbs up and support our channel. Honestly, we get calls, texts, and emails all the time from people looking to move, relocate, shift. I love that word shifting. Um, going from one place to another, upsizing, downsizing, relocating. We're here for you. We love helping people. So now we've talked about all of that. I think we're getting into it, no? Yes. Therefore, we wanted to put for you a couple items, no? Right. That's he's how... He's math guy. He's going to do the math how the interest rate is gonna affect you to purchase a home. And let's just start with what we wanted to start. Step one, we do wanna say, if you're already in a home and you have a fixed rate, you're fine. Nothing we say with the math is going to really affect you until maybe we get to like our fourth point, which is about when people move. Uh, fourth or fifth, I don't, yeah, math. But uh, yeah, if you're at a fixed rate, then you should be totally fine, which means uh, the interest rate changing doesn't affect your monthly payment. So step one, seller, breathe. <sighs> number two. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, before my wife jumped to the number two, my wife is super fast. Therefore, unless you are fixed rate, you are not HELOC or ARM. Okay, hold on. With HELOC, you might be okay if it's fixed, but if it's an ARM with HELOC, you should read your terms. And then also we wanted to list for you what is the uh, difference between the uh, ARM or the fixed interest right, rate. Right, there are some people who are an arm on, in an ARM deal and this absolutely affects you. So if you're in a fixed rate, which we always try to recommend to people, you have a lower risk, no? Respect to the ARM that you have a higher risk. Higher risk. Um, with the fixed, there's no surprises. You know what your monthly bill is for the next 30 years. Um, not that you're staying there 30 years. We'll get into that later. <laughs> number two, what is about for, it, with number ARM? Number three, actually. With the number... No, with, with ARM, aren't you uncertain about the... Yeah, number basically, with the ARM, you are not certain so about what's going to happen. your monthly bill can fluctuate, which is a little scary. Number yeah. three, your interest rate is locked if you are fixed. It is locked. You already know what it is. Um, if you're buying, you know what it's going to be and what your monthly payments are going to be, and it's never going to change. Exactly. What about with ARM? And in the ARM, you probably have um, a initial. smaller initial interest rate, and then it kicks in, it and then changes, it's fluctuating, fluctuating. And fluctuating, and it may got even higher than what you started with. Right, so what's nice about fixed, besides the rate is not changing, is that your monthly principal and your interest rates are all staying the same. You are paying the same amount no matter what, whereas if you are in a arm, what's happening? It's gonna be fluctuating, no? It's fluctuating based on all those interest all rates. All your interest rate that is gonna kick in after that fixed term, initial fixed term. Or it could be like, I, I, yeah, it just depends on your loan, so pay attention to your loan. Now let's talk about that math, which is your real specialty. Um, um, let's say, how much is it when we're talking about interest rates going up? Want to give me some basic numbers? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Therefore, we wanted to say that how much your monthly pay really going up. And with this number that I'm going to give you and is basically... And don't the Fed said they're going to up the fret interest rates three times this year. So pay attention to three times if you're in an arm. Now, what does that mean? Therefore, to be honest, the past seven or ten days, the interest rate uh, went up. If you right. talk to your and mortgage that's the that's broker, just... uh, the interest rate went from 0.3% to 0.7% up. Uh, and also, we hear... What does that mean? What the, does that mean? How much is a half, an, half a percent? Therefore, we got the mean? average of half a percent for you to give you an idea that how much your monthly payment is going to change, no? Therefore, if you looking at $100,000 loan, no? Okay. And you're putting 3% down like a conventional loan. Okay. You basically are looking at a loan with the previous interest rate with the change of the new interest rate, you're looking at paying $27 more. So you mean you my loan went from just interest rate $422 to $449, um just loan not Taxes no or tax or stuff. fee. You this go from 422 rate. to 449. Okay. Therefore, you're talking about $27 increase. Okay, but $100,000 is pretty low. What if it's 200000 
and your mortgage insurance is going to be around eighty dollars a month. That's and if on my side said, if you go to the two hundred or two hundred k, we basically are talking about your loan is going to uh, go from eight forty four to what? 898 898 basically you're talking about $54 more in your monthly pay without consideration of the tax or the fees okay what about 250,000 for the 250,000 we are talking about 1055 and now after half a percent increase to 1123 and what happens if I do have PMI on my how what's happened to my PMI Therefore, your PMI from 200K that was 160 is going to jump to $240, uh, $200 per month. So we're going for like 40, 100 bucks a month now at the 250. That's pretty scary. What about 300K? Therefore, if you go to the 300K, basically we are talking about 1348 before increase of half a percent. And after half increase of half a percent, you are uh, going to basically. Uh, 13 um, uh, you have, I don't know, we can't read your number right there but he's $82 up so yeah $82 you're gonna go up um, and so and that's just before PMI what happens after PMI therefore your PMI is gonna go basically to $240 a month oh my gosh that's a lot of money now I'm talking about a hundred bucks a month right um that's pretty cool it can be so we have to kind of look at these numbers and be and be wary so that's why we always should do number what I'm gonna say if you are top number three right we can go to number three therefore basically what we want to tell you if you are taking the loan from hundred thousand to three hundred thousand after this half a percent come to the play with the increase of interest rate you end up might paying twenty seven dollars for the hundred uh, K fifty four dollars for two hundred K sixty eight dollars 250k and $82 for 300k. Well, that's a lot. So number three is I wanted to say, if you are looking to buy a house and you want to stick to these on rates, I do recommend at this point sticking to a house that is on a little under your budget. It's ra rather have a, bet a house that you can afford, even with the changing interest rates, rather than a house that you are paying for the house and you can't afford anything else. You can't live your life. Um, people like to go out to dinner. $100 is a really nice restaurant. Um, $27, okay, maybe I can cut out a couple things with Starbucks, depending on the type of thing we're talking about there. But you should know what your debt to income ratio is um, and make sure that you're not house rich, but I mean house poor, having a great house, but just living poor because you can't afford anything else. So we want to try to avoid that. So we really speak to your realtor as well. We love making sure people stay under budget, not over budget. We're not trying to max you out so you can't afford anything because then you'll hate us. That wouldn't be a, that's not a good relationship in the future. So, and we do need to keep your relationship. So, because you know, you might want to change in the future, which we're going to get to in a minute. So, Therefore, as uh, my wife said, you need always to watch or observe your debt to income ratio. Right. That is super important. So you want to make sure that we are staying in a place that you can afford, which brings us to number four. Number no? four. Yeah. Wow. Yay. This is where the sellers come back into play. <laughs> if you were just stay tuned, stay, I'm happy you're back. Number four, most people before coronavirus did not stay in their home 30 years. We are much beyond that point. For how long did you say that? Typically before coronavirus, three to seven years. Three to seven years. With the coronavirus change of 2020, it is now probably even less. We just don't have the modern statistics, but we can see from what we are seeing, people are moving much faster as well. So even before coronavirus, people do not stay in their homes 30 years. They stay three to seven years on average. So, and for our for our family, for example, we moved three times. Yeah, so I mean, in the past move. couple uh, years, and that's one of the proof that you can put it in that equation. Okay, so now we get to talk about the market, and I love talking about the market. I'm a former economics teacher. Yeah, for number five, no? Okay, yeah. So let's talk as a former economics teacher, and my macroeconomics students really always did amazingly well on their AP test. Ninety-seven percent A ratio. Don't forget, you always have kids who don't. So that's with my pass rate for econ because I love talking about economics. So I saw these other people talking about like how interest rates affect and how everything will be okay. And here's what I want to say. And they're saying the market, I saw some crazy things on, on YouTube. So what I'm going to say is this, if 
what is good about the economy is the economy is stable. We want economy growing at pi. I know that's crazy. 3.14, 1.7, whatever. We, that is a perfect economy <laughs> in a perfect world. It's true. Yeah. Um, so this is what we want. We want a stable growth, stable interest rates, stable, stable price, stable everything. That is a great sign of an economy. Inflation is not a good sign of the economy, neither is increasing interest rates. Yes. Um, so I want to say, if the inflation is happening, which we know is happening, the Fed has three things they're going to do. They're going to sell bonds, which you can go buy bonds. You can, they're going to increase the interest Increasing rates. Percent. And then they're going to increase the reserve ratio, which really has nothing to do with us as buying homes. What they're going to do with buying homes, though, is they're going to increase that interest rate, which is what we talked about earlier. And they've already said they're going to do it three times this year. So that's crazy. It means that the inflation needs to be fought. We don't know how, where the number is going to be at the end to fight inflation. We know that in the 70s, inflation was so high interest rates were as high as 15% am I saying we're gonna to get to 15% absolutely not <laughs> but I am saying that if interest rates are if inflation keeps happening they're going to increase those interest rates to to find a stability so this is just one of those things that we have to pay attention to so I don't want to scare you but I am saying it is one of the things that we have historically done in order to keep an economy which is stable and stability is what we all want and we are not in a stable thing plus who could have predicted the coronavirus? Let's be honest. I would never have thought I was going to live through a pandemic and yes. and figure out what how to wear a mask on my face. Like I didn't know I was going to wear. At one point, I was so scared to go to my front yard to go take a picture in my yard by a tree that okay. I would never have predicted okay. that. What I'm saying is anything can happen. Therefore, my wife expanded a lot. We wanted to go to the number six, okay. which basically oh. what we wanted to tell you is supply and demand. Yes. You know? Which is another econ term. I love supply and demand because again, when here's the thing, we do not have enough supply to meet demand. This is yeah. true. Even if they start building all those houses and they open, I, I'm, we're literally waiting, chomping in a bit for like builders to open up a new neighborhood so we can send buyers to this neighborhood. Why? People need houses exactly. and we just don't have enough houses. So, and don't forget, rents are increasing. Inflation is really happening. Exactly. Rent is going up, which means demand is staying high. Supply is lower than we want, which means supply and demand meet. What does that mean? Higher prices. Higher prices. What, and if you have those higher interest rates, it still might not matter to people because they want to get in and lock in a safe interest rate to where they're going to be safe and they're going to have a fixed interest rate because the one thing we all want, economy and a personal level, is stability. So this is why we always recommend those fixed rates. Therefore, the point was that with all the numbers that I told you from 100K to 200, uh, 300K, basically your number is not going to go crazy. It's going to be a still under $100 a month. And also, as my wife said, your rent is going to go up no matter what. Yeah. And for example, the past three months, the rent went 18 to 22% high. Therefore, you should think about also the supply demand that we explain here that is still you need to think about not to be afraid because we just gave you the heads up some factors that might affect but it's still if you don't max your power of uh, what the yeah, power well, that we talk it's still you can watch your debt come to end uh, ratio and it's still get a house that you want with getting the mortgage. Right, so we want to make sure that everybody is happy. That is what we do. We like we call ourselves more matchmakers than we do uh, matching people to homes than actually realtors because that's just what we love doing. We love finding what do people want, what do they need, and then what can they afford, and then finding the match. So this is why we hope this video is useful for you. Yes. We hope that we made sense a little bit with his math and my economics. We love talking about all these things. And, and if you are searching in Greenville, Winterville, and around this area, we know the area and the suburbs very well and helps with your plan, please call us and we're going to support you and help you to find the house that you love. Yeah. Um, so thank you for coming and, and talk you. to you soon. And talk to you soon for the next video, guys.